On my hand here is the XH2S, and today will be an initial review of this camera here. Now, this is a production set. It is already launched in Singapore by the time you've seen it. I mean, some countries may not have launched it yet, but it is now available in stores to purchase here. And uh, this is purchased by me, my own money here, and I will give you a very frank review. And if you are on the fence, I think this review will help you. I'm Richard and welcome to Zappi Productions. So today, I will look at the XH2S and give you my initial thoughts. So within that few hours I collected it, I actually tested some subjects and even did a photo shoot with it with my friend Riff. Uh, in fact, let me play a very short clip of her saying hi. So today I'm taking a photo shoot with Riff next to me, as you can see here. She'll be helping me test on my camera and then I'll post a review later. See ya. <laughs> So yeah, I already did the photo shoot and I also shot some cars to test autofocus and stuff. Now, I will give you a very short initial summary of this camera here in case you do not want to look through the entire review. I noticed that not everybody do that. And you may want to just purchase the XH2S now because the stocks will be quite limited. So first, I will say as the XH2S overall is a very nice camera. Uh, and the most important part is, is autofocus. And I can tell you that it is greatly improved over anything before it. However, I personally feel today that it is definitely still not as good as something like the Sony A1. How good is it? Take a look at the review later. And then lastly, is it worth the money? Now, if you are going to pay 2500 USD or 4000 Sing dollars, I will say that it is probably worth it if you need the high speed autofocus function, the burst rates and the overall usability of this camera itself. Uh, if you do not need all those things, probably this is not for you. It is quite costly for what it gives out. Uh, I'm not going to test too in-depth into image quality today because I do not have time to inspect every single file. But so far, uh, this is my initial summary of it. So let's take a look at the various things of this camera and I will give you a um, very initial look of it in terms of how I feel, especially as an owner of the XH2S. Now firstly, I will say as for the build quality wise, very nice build. Uh, there is some change in design as there's some flatness here that is quite unlike what I experienced in the GFX system. Now in terms of control, if you are a Fuji user, it is, uh, I think, I feel very similar, except I did miss the pressing of the dial here. I did notice that, you know, in my previous camera, I could press the dial in to just zoom in. For some reason, they removed it. So it became a bit unnatural that I had to press the joystick to zoom in instead. Um, something to just get used to. After I custom function everything, I think it's fine. So I did miss the AF, AF uh, changing function, the AFC, AFS changing function in my... Uh, original Fuji cameras, they all have it for this, for some reason, they removed it in the XH2S. So yeah, you have to go through the menu just to change the focus type. Uh, other than that, it's pretty okay. I mean, uh, if you if you are talking about its general function, usability, in terms of its body and build, I think it is pretty good. Now, the viewfinder is improved and it actually does refresh up to 240 frames per second. Uh, I can't tell the difference. I'm on boost mode at 120 frames per second probably no difference to me. Now the screen is a full flipped out screen. I do like to use it. I, in fact, I used it a few times today. Uh, overall, I think that the screen is quite nice, quite sharp, and I don't have any issues with it. Nothing much to talk about other than that. So physical wise, I think you can go to many review sites to just take a look at it. Uh, not the biggest determining factor for a camera worth this price. <laughs> if you ask me, I saw it doesn't suck holding it. Okay, so the next thing is that uh, when it comes to using in a field, first let's talk about IBs. IBs on this camera is very good. As usual, APS-Cs normally can IBs a little bit better than other cameras. By the way, IBs is image stabilization, inbuilt image stabilization to be exact. So in terms of stabilization, this is definitely more stable than almost any other full frame camera I've tried. It does do one fifth of a shutter with 10 out of 10 usable shots, seven tech sharp and three usable. So this is definitely better than almost any other full frames because almost every other full frame will definitely have soft shots at one fifth of a shutter itself. So this camera is fantastic when it comes to image stabilization, at least better than almost any other full frames that I've tried so far. 
Now, in terms of its shooting speed, it does shoot 40 frames per second on release priority, uh, and it is quite constant. In fact, let me show you this shot here. You can see that it is 40 frames per second, the start and end time, and in between is full 40 frames per second. So don't worry that you cannot achieve it. You definitely can achieve it, but at what cost? So I'll talk about it later. But before that, I'll talk about buffer. Now, in terms of buffer-wise, this camera with SD card will start slowing down significantly at about 170 plus shots. Uh, it will slow down significantly, literally, with SD cards. Uh, once you use CF Express, it does slow down only after 200 plus shots with a 512 gigabyte CF Express card. Now, with the CF Express card, the clearing time is about 14 seconds. So it means that this clearing time is actually slower than almost any other flagship I've tried so far. I mean, the R3 clears at half the time, it's like 7 seconds. But just to note that the buffer, I believe, on the XH2S is actually bigger because it's shooting 26 megapixel photos. Each photo is actually about 6 to 7 megabytes more than the Canon's version. And uh, it does shoot until 200 frames before slowing down. The Canon actually slows down at 170 frames and it's doing 30 fps. So I'm pretty sure that the buffer on this camera is bigger, at least by about 40 to 50% in terms of memory space, but the clearing speed is still slow. I mean, 14 seconds is slow compared to seven seconds or even the, I'll say as the Z9 is two seconds, but the Z9 probably has no buffer at all to start with. Now, when it comes to SD card, it takes like 40 seconds to clear. So, I mean, if you're gonna burst with SD card, it's gonna be painful, so. Uh, if you're going to just stick with SD card, this camera bursting function is probably not for you. Uh, if you do occasional small bursts, no problem. If you're doing long bursts, 3 to 4 seconds, 40 seconds is just way too long to clear a buffer. I mean, uh, I'm not using the fastest card here. This is a V60. I believe a V90 will more, maybe maybe you know improve the speed to about 30 seconds. But no, I don't guarantee that. So that is in terms of its uh, burst and of course buffer depth. Now when it comes to uh, its autofocus, because you can shoot 40 frames per second, but if you can't hit the shot, it is pointless. As I said earlier, this is a vast improvement and I can tell you that it is a vast improvement. For static shots, you can use continuous AF very reliably now and with eye detection, no problem. I do have a video here because I have no time to plug in my monitors and stuff, but I can tell you that uh, it does give you full eye detection it's just that it's a little bit weird. I'll talk about it later. The thing is, this camera aesthetic shots is 100% hit with continuous autofocus. So this is quite unlike the other Fuji cameras. You know, in the, other, in the past, even continuous autofocus can hunt even on static shots. So it does detect the eye very well and it does hold its focus very well on the eye using 1.4 lenses and f2 200mm here. When it comes to moving shots, however, it is not the best I've seen. So when it comes to moving shot, I tried walking, walking and spinning, and just walking and flipping the skirt. I did notice that the keeper rate is about 93%. Now you're talking about almost 200 shots that has been spent, and it is running at 40 frames a second. So 7% loss of shots is kind of like 15 shots that are unusable. Not a really big deal if you ask me, but it is there. And it kind of have this weird characteristic that it suddenly just cannot catch up for that four shots, or should I say the 0 0.1 of the burst, and then it catch up again. I can show you this small little segment here. It just like miss for these four shots. Very weird. So I don't really understand why, but that is the characteristics. And that's the reason why it only hits like 93% of the time because it always have this weird segment of shots that are lost. Unlike the other cameras that don't really do this kind of thing. I mean, they are only lost for a, a shot or two. But Fuji does it like a few shots. When it comes to tracking something like cars, it's also the same thing. It's about 93, 92% hit rate. Uh, depends, sometimes it can hit 100%, sometimes it hits like 80 plus percent, sometimes it hits like 93, 94%. Uh, but on general, it works out pretty okay, 90 something percent hit rate with a 200mm f2 here. And that is when I shot it at night because that was the only time I can try it. And um, it was shooting at like what, 12,800 ISO. Wait, 3,200 or 12,800 ISO. Just take a look at the screen here. So. Overall, even in low light, the AF does work very, very well. By the way, the old Fuji cameras can never AF at such a high ISO without dying in its process. So it is focusing very well. Not 100% keeper rate, um, not 98% too, but 93% is still pretty good for 40 frames a second. Once again, if you compare to other 
flagship cameras like the Sony A1 here. I think that uh, the Sony A1, the Canon R3, and even the Nikon Z9 does outperform this in autofocus and it comes to percentage. Because those cameras have usually a keeper rate of 95% plus when it comes to using a uh, telephoto lens or any of their lens and then shooting moving vehicles or even humans. In fact, when I was shooting humans with the Canon R3 with 85 1.2, I could obtain 100% keeper rate. So that's something to note. So yes, the Fuji Film X-H2S have a vastly improved autofocus compared to uh, the earlier re versions of it and if you compare to even most cameras out there it is superior in many ways it's definitely superior to like say the a7r4 because when i use that before i know that the keeper rate is not even uh, 90 plus percent for a moving subject that is even walking to me so i will tell you that if you are looking at it from a flagship point of view this is pretty much flagship 40 frames per second with 90 plus percent keeper rate um, not the best flagship in the world in terms of autofocus but it has 40 frames per second so that's a trade-off and I think some of you will truly enjoy it and probably the biggest selling point of the XH2S. So when it comes to AF there is one irritation and that is in continuous AF mode there is no white tracking so even though it has a relatively good eye tracking function you can only use it in zone which means you can't use the whole panel and autofocus for the purpose of AFC in white you can't do it you can do white in single shot but not afc in white i have no idea why but that is how uh, fuji designed this camera itself so when it comes to rolling shutter i would say as this camera does it pretty well uh definitely better than a non-stack sensor like the r5 which you can see here uh, but i would say as compared to the r3 and the a1 it is slightly behind uh, it gives this general feeling of maybe a A92 or slightly better than A92 standard. If you actually compare the readout speed, which Fuji says about 150, 160, that is very similar to the A9, A92, which is 120, 150, I believe that's what's written in the past. So, very usable electronic shutter mode. Uh, just that the rolling shutter, I would say, is not as good as the best of the stack sensor today. Now, between the electronic shutter and the mechanical shutter, I would say, is there's almost no difference. You can take a look at the shot here. I overexpose it by five stops to see the shadow regions. The one is not cleaner than the other, which is unlike the R3. R3 actually is different. So is the R5. And uh, for this camera, there is almost no difference at all. The A92 and the A9 in the past, there is also a difference. So that's something to note. So I would say as this camera should only be used in electronic shutter, there's no reason to go mechanical unless you are using flash. And that's really about it. Uh, I didn't do a very extensive uh, image quality test. I did do, do a photo shoot with it. You can see some photos here. Overall, I think it's quite pleasing, but it has that inherent grain in Lightroom. So I don't think it's the problem with the camera. I think it's just Lightroom demo zacking. But yeah, pretty much that's how I felt about image quality. Now, in my final thoughts on this camera, as what I said earlier, this camera does autofocus significantly better than anything before it. This camera also does perform better than anything before it. It has a very deep buffer, relatively fast clearance, and um, overall very usable camera itself. The only thing is, is it worth the $4,000? Now, uh, this is something to think about, but if you are needing a camera with flagship light autofocus system, I think this is as close as it gets at half the price. I mean, you could obviously get a secondhand A9 or maybe a secondhand A92, which is going to be very close to this price. Or maybe you can consider an R5, but all of them do cost more if you're looking at brand new sets. A brand new R5 does cost significantly more than this, a thousand over USD more. In Singapore, it's about 1.4K, 1.3K Sing dollars more, but it does have a lot of coupons and stuff. But if you look at A92, it costs a good $2,000 plus more than this camera itself. So if you ask me, this camera is a relatively good deal if you are needing the fast AF, 40 frames a second, deep buffer, and overall a very fast and usable camera itself. The only thing you're giving up is the APS-C part of things. Some people care, some people don't. And, uh, you know, there's also the other thing that you probably give up, and that is the bouquet because no matter how an APS-C just can't bokeh better than a full frame, considering um, money, no objection, because a 1.2 lens on full frame, there's no equivalent on the APS-C. And that's how I really feel about this camera. Half the price, but 
maybe three quarter to maybe 90 per- 80 to 90 percent of the quality of a high end flagship. And if that is really what you want, fast usable camera, I think the XH2S is definitely for you. That's about it for today. I hope this helps you because I'm giving a very frank review here. This is my own personal copy. I think I have done my initial best with that 12 hours. And if you have any more questions, do write down in the comments below. Do like and subscribe. And hit the bell button too so that you can get more information on the XHS2 in the upcoming days. In fact, the next few days, I'll be doing a lot of portrait shoots. So I will share you my experience using the camera out for the purpose of portraiture. I really think that uh, Fujifilm has done a very, very good job and you should be excited if you are interested in APS-C cameras itself. That's about it. Bye-bye.